welcome back. Another day, another vlog. We're back. Thursday, Friday, Friday, Thursday. 1st of October. Wow, that's gone quick. Another year flying past for us. Uh, what's happening? I crashed hard last night. I think I'd had a total of about four hours sleep in 48 hours. So it was a total, total, utter blackout. <laughs> Well, when I went to bed, so it was good. I had a great day. Got to play with Jack all day. That was awesome. Uh, he's just a barrel of laughs. A little three-year-old running around like a madman. It's always fun. Uh, very hard to beat that. Um, other than that, I did watch the Sigma release, and we've got some other stuff. We've got some Canon stuff. We've got some Peter McKinnon, Olympus News, Amazon, heaps to get through. Uh, so it's going to be a good show for this Thursday. So stay tuned, and we've got some unboxing stuff to talk about as well. So lots in the lots in the show. Do want to talk about it? We'll mention though tomorrow night. Don't forget. Uh, I think yesterday I said it was eight thirty p.m. for the premiere for the new video for the Trig Sunset. Um, I did have put a couple of photos. Started putting the photos up on Insta. Uh, if you've seen the last two days, so if you're on the Instagram, if not, go check out the links below for Insta. And you can uh, catch up on all the photos and see all the photos from the channel as well. So go check that out. So it's going to be 9 p.m. I had it at 8.30. I put it at 9. I had it at 8.30. I said yesterday, but it's actually 9 o'clock. I did that just so people could get their dinner and didn't have to rush to try and get dinner done and stuff. Being a parent, you get your kids done, and then you can try and get your own dinner sorted, and then you want to sit down and relax. I uh, didn't want to have to rush people, so yeah. It's probably a little bit later for East Coasters, but by then you should be well and truly into a bottle of red and it'll probably make more sense. <laughs> um, so yeah, nine o'clock tomorrow night, that's Australian time, that's Perth time. Uh, so just do your correlations. If you subscribe down below and you've got that bell, um, you can set a reminder on the video. So it should have already come up as a premiere. If you click on that, you can set a reminder so it'll automatically tell you when it's coming up and send you a notification on your device. Radio, let's get into it. Um, we might do, we'll do the news and then we'll do the unboxing stuff at the end. That's always fun. Um, big news, uh, been a territory boy uh, growing up in Darwin and I, how we started this channel from the Barrow Classic. Uh, the C's, if you haven't heard of it before, if you're a long time watcher, first time listener or on the podcast, the season six of the million dollar fish starts today. So 1st of October, that's the start date. Barrack, the Northern Territory Tourism Commission developed this six years ago and it's a great competition. No one's ever won it. And basically the premise is you catch, a, go fishing up in the awesome, beautiful, amazing country of the Northern Territory. There's about six different locations. They put these barra. Uh, Barramundi, I probably should speak for everyone. So Barramundi, they tag these Barramundi and in what used to be one tag, one red tagged Barramundi was if you caught that, you get a million dollars cash. Now in Australia, you don't have, it, have to pay any taxes on our lotteries and stuff, so that's a million dollars cash. That's enough from the tax. For these guys in the States that do watch, they do know about, that's a lot of moolah. It's probably less for you. It's probably about, it'll be about 700,000 US dollars. So. That's a lot of cat. If you catch one fish, you're super lucky. Now, six seasons, no one's ever got the red tag fish. So what that means is there's seven red tag fish because one season they put two out there. So there's seven red tag fish out there swimming around or possibly eaten or by a crocodile or something. But uh, you need that magic red tag and you can pay off your house, basically. So that's pretty darn awesome. So that starts today. It goes from October 1st to the 31st of March. Uh, even if you don't know if you're going to the Territory in the next six months, go and register. There's prizes they give away each month from all their um, sponsors, uh, which is awesome. You get some good stuff anyway, and just by registering, then you, you're eligible for those prizes as well, so it's worthwhile just doing it. Um, and then in the next six months, once COVID all hopefully clears out or we get a little bit more travel, uh, you're able to get up to the territory or plan a trip, well, then you're already registered. Because if you're not registered and you catch the fish and you ring up, you're not going to get the money, simple as that. So it doesn't cost anything to register. 
go over, register, very cool. So season six, Million Dollar Fish, just Google that, Million Dollar Fish or NT Tourism, uh, in Northern Territory, Million Dollar Fish, and you should get to the website. Uh, it's a great competition. It's awesome because you win anyway because you're out fishing. Barramundi is my favorite fish, so I pretty much don't fish for anything else anymore. Uh, I, it's the most amazing. Beautiful rivers, beautiful land, beautiful uh, animal life. You can't go wrong, so go check it out. Now, the Sigma launched last night. Uh, I did get a chance to watch it. And I, as I said to you yesterday, the previous launch, all the materials around it and even the video before the, for the release mentioned products. Uh, on the Instagram, I'd asked if, if it was going to be products. They basically didn't say anything. They couldn't say anything on what they're going to release. But it was yet again one product. Uh, it was what we talked about, the rumoured, that macro lens. So we already knew it about it, I think it was a couple of weeks ago that I talked about the possibility that this is what it was going to be. And it was that 105mm f2.8 or Tony 2.8 DCDN macro art lens. So designed specifically for mirrorless. Uh, it's in the art series range. So obviously the highest quality, I guess comparatively, you'd be looking at an L series lens for a Canon lens and a G Master for a Sony. So in that sort of same sort of territory, uh, a little bit cheaper than those two specific ones, but uh, definitely the next best thing. So obviously it's gonna be, it's super high quality, awesome. It's not stabilized uh, for, uh, check that out. But what they have done, they've done a few things because it is a macro. They've lengthened the focus uh, drive. So basically when you're focusing, it moves up and down. So they've lengthened that out so it's a longer throw. And then that makes it a little bit more smoother and more fine tunable for macro. Also by having that lengthened, uh, that also when you're doing different angles, when you've got a camera upside down, facing down to get some macro stuff or on angles up in the trees and stuff, uh, that can sometimes affect the stability or uh, you might have issues with uh, the lens. So now they've done a lot of, in regards to that because of this macro. So they've done put a lot of thought and effort into how this lens is gonna be used and what it's for. And it's obviously, it's gonna be a fantastic lens. It, the only disappointment I had was the fact that yet again, it's only for Sony and L mount. So they, for whatever reason, I'm not sure if uh, Sigma and Canon had a bit of a falling out or, or something going on there because they'd seem to be really focused into those two brands and the Canon stuff that seems like they haven't. I think the last lenses they brought out was this 16 mil, the 30 and the 56 for Canon. I don't remember anything else coming out after that actually for the Canon range. So it's sort of be good to get a little bit more back in Canon. I've got a funny feeling there's a little bit of bad blood maybe or something there from them not releasing too much, not even for the RF mount as much. So the last one they did, I think you could get the RF mount. Oh no, that was, that was a different lens. So yeah, look, it's a little really nice lens. Looks really good. It's going to be 800 US dollars. It's available on the 23rd of October. So if you're into your macro stuff and you've got a Sony or L mount, well then you're laughing. It's going to be a really, really nice lens. And that price ain't too bad for a lens. 800 is about 1100 bucks Australian for an art series. That is amazing. So definitely go check it out. Um, Canon, from the Canon range, you know we run an M50 here. The rumors about the M52 coming and then a possibly a higher end ASPC, APSC model coming and all those different things. Is the M mount dying? Is what's happening and whatever? Well, basically on Canon Rumors today, they put out a statement saying that the M50 Mark II or Series 2 is confirmed. It's definitely coming. It's gonna be coming in the last quarter of this year, which is pretty much now. So anytime soon, we're, they're expecting an announcement from Canon about a new model M52, which is fantastic news. It's a bit disconcerting because I'm sort of, I do need, I've been waiting for this one to whether to get a, the new M52 and use, uh, I can keep this one for my video and then use the new M50 as my photography or I wait and just hopefully they re release that high end one as well so I can sort of pick out which one I wanna get so that'll be the big toss up. But that's awesome news that they've confirmed it. it I guess it uh, allays a little bit of fear about them canning the whole M mount range. Uh, I guess we'll all see what it's gonna bring out there. There's, I'm assuming it's gonna have a 
4K uncropped, which would be pretty darn awesome. And then something along the lines of uh, maybe some dual SD cards and some other little features that are easier to do. Then I don't think it's going to be too much cosmetic uh, stuff. You may get that sensor out of the Mark VI. Uh, that's probably going to go in there as well. The SD cards, probably not. Some other, it's just, I think it's going to be more software based and features based upgrade. I don't think it's going to be too huge. It's going to be that. That high-end one's going to be one that should be a brand new body and brand new everything in the duck's gut. So fingers crossed they do both at the same time. And I imagine in the next month, by the end of October, we'll know what it's going to be. October, November, December, that's the last quarter. We are in that range. So can't wait. Should be exciting times. Peter McKinnon, uh, if you haven't heard of him, um, I guess you probably don't much watch too much YouTube, but he's a very big photographer slash video guy. He's done done really really well. Just hit five million subscribers. He has the he's worked with Polar Pro last year to create the Peter McKinnon Polar Pro Variable ND filter, which is basically a super premium, the top of the waza for ND filters. Um, they've just released a new range, a series two of that ND filter, and it's got. Uh, a little bit better body build. Uh, it's now got haptic feedback on your notches. So they always had a locked out at the end, but now when you get to each stop, you can sort of feel it. They've built in some sort of mechanical haptic feedback to it. Um, <clears throat> and they've also got a mist edition as well. So that's basically gives you that soft feel. So if you've got, say, fluoro lights, it gives that little bit of a glow to it um, and then softens up skin tones and that without ruining the sharpness too much, but it looks pretty good. Uh, it's got a whole new Defender. So the Defender was like basically a rubber cap that went over that you kept your uh, filter in after you took it off um, and you could put it on with that. Well, they've created a whole new one. So it has a backing as well. So now you get your hard cases between you and you put your filters between. Well, basically the Defender's like that now. So you never have to touch the actual glass or the filter put in on your camera. So new Defender case. Screw it straight onto your camera front and then pull it straight off, put the back in on, boom, glass is always tickety-boo. So that's pretty good. Uh, $250, US look, they're not cheap. They're basically the best you can get. And if you look in the market and you've, got a, you've been using ND filters and you use them regularly and you'd want to sort of see the difference and, and upgrade the quality and get a bit of that, uh, that dark shading that you do get on the cheaper ones, it's... Pretty much, you know, you pay for what you get in ND filters. Um, if you get the good ones, that that sort of little dark shadow you do get, that should pretty much all go. So, 250 US, it's a uh, pretty XE, but you've got a two to five and then a six to nine stops. Uh, so it's, it doesn't do the full range, but it, it's pretty good. So and it uses all that shot glass, so fairly high quality. So go check that one out and that new. Um, Sorry, I did forget to mention that new Defender case, filter case cover section is actually waterproof with a seal too. So while you've got that in there, basically it comes, uh, it's just like a filter cover. And it, once you've got it all sealed up, it's waterproof. You can chuck in your pocket, go wade through water or shoot in water. You can pull it out and put it on your camera if you're doing something in a river or something like that. So that's pretty good. It's obviously really well made and, and you do pay for it, but yeah, good quality. Go if you're looking after a new one or you want to upgrade your old one, uh, now's your chance. Uh, got an email today from Olympus. Um, obviously signed up to most to sort of get as much info from you, for you guys. And September 30th was the, the final ink on the, ink on the paper deal day with their JIP deal. So the Japanese investment uh, firm. Uh, they've signed off. The new company is now called OM Digital Solutions Corpora Corporation. Um, so obviously a little bit of a different name, different. it's all a different company now. They've retained all their intellectual property and all that sort of stuff. So you don't have to worry too much about that. They're up until January next year, everything is going to be happening as is, where is, from what I could read. Uh, the only thing I got took out of the information on their website and email was the fact that they talked about they uh, a couple of times they mentioned the fact that yes they're going to be continually selling gear and stuff in the Americas there was 
it's, if that it makes sense. So the way I read into it, maybe they're going to be cutting back on other countries. They're just going to concentrate their brand in the states. Uh, so if that possibly could mean that they might be cutting back all their service centers in other areas and just have a one one spot, one service center place in the states. And if you want to send it, you have to send it overseas to get it to them to fix anything or something like that. I'm not sure how it's going to do. They, they weren't really giving up much information about 21, 2021 and onwards. Uh, they've got a clear pitch up till the end of the year. And as is, is where is, it's going to stay the same until 2021. And now that all the paperwork's done, they're going to, I guess, get the new management in and start looking at and put start rolling out where they're going to go in the next year and next five years, 10 years. I'm sure they'll have a five and 10 year plan done by start of 2021. So yeah, look, big news. Uh, look, they're a fantastic camera. I actually have been looking at them. They, the stabilization on them is just insane. The weatherproof uh, abilities of them are just well renowned. They're fantastic. It's just the fact that you have to go and buy a whole other new lens, uh, set of lenses and take the whole lot over. And you sim and the they're crop sensored one, so basically the same as the M50 in that regards, uh, and the sensor's the same. So I'm really not getting much on them. That best part I get out of it is the weatherproof and the stabilization. And I'm hoping that with the new M50 or this upper level uh, APS-C that Canon's bringing out, that I'll get that same for that. So I guess we'll see what decision we have. What that camera is going to be like to whether I look at possibly maybe just moving the whole thing to Olympus or getting Olympus as my photography camera and using the M50 as my as video camera. So uh, those Olympuses are really, really nice bits of kit, really well made. Um, obviously, for whatever reason, they just poor business decisions or whatever, just haven't got that sort of wrap. They are a micro four thirds. They don't have a full frame sensor uh, set up. So they probably need to, I guess, maybe look into building a full frame version, uh, taking that brilliant technology they have and going into there. I would have thought that a, say a Canon or a, a Sony or a Panasonic would have been perfect company to come in and take and buy the Olympus brand and getting access to that technology for their stabilization and their ruggedness and stuff like that. If you imagine a Panasonic with their video knowledge and combining the two with Olympus's photography knowledge and uh, build quality and that stabilization, you put all that combined, that would be a killer brand for Panasonic. Uh, definitely uh, would be one you could take up against a Sony and a, a Canon. So uh, it's interesting that they sold themselves to JRP. Not sure why these other companies didn't go in and go, well, these guys do have really great technology that we can use. Let's combine it with ours. We'll keep them there as a niche brand, but then we get access to all those designs and technology. I thought that would have been a better option for them. Um, Amazon. Amazon, we talked a while about go about the Amazon Go stores. Uh, they do the, basically you walk in and just walk out with your trolley. You don't have to pay for anything. You've got your app on your phone and then you just go in, put all your stuff in the trolley, walk out of the shop, all pay for, gets billed straight to your account. Well, it's gone another step further now. Uh, you don't even need your phone. They're using your handprint. So basically, they've got scanners, and you just as you're walking out, you just go through and scan your hand, uh, read your handprint, and then you're all locked and loaded. They will then access your account, send those details off, and you'll pay through it through your normal Amazon credit cards, means, or savings. So pretty cool, uh, pretty wild technology. Amazon definitely at the forefront in the regards to shopping. It's why they're the biggest and the best. And uh, they, there's another reason why they are so far in front. So very, very cool. Now it's starting off with two shops in Seattle, I believe. So if you are in the Seattle area and you do use the current Amazon Go, uh, next time you go to the store, uh, go check that out. It's going to be pretty funky. I'm not sure what you have to do to set it up, but uh, maybe just catch up with the store and uh, see what you can do. So very, very cool. Uh, something different to uh, getting basically palm readers. I don't know if it's going to read your future or tell you if you're going to find love in the next week, but uh, it's definitely going to let you pay for your shopping.
<laughs> um, and first responders in England in the Peak District. The Peak District, a well-renowned photography haven. Uh, I think Nigel Danson, uh, Thomas Heaton, uh, James Popsy, three of the guys I at least follow, um, and some other guys, a heap of other great photographers around there, um, all sort of live in around that area and just it's just a beautiful part of the world. Uh, well, they're uh, getting their first aid guys or their paramedics. They're looking into, obviously it's hilly and it's got massive hills and waterfalls and gullies and rivers and stuff like that. So not the best place to be driving around. There's not many roads. It's all beautiful hikes and stuff like that. And we and because you have so many photographers and the hiking laws in London where you can basically just walk anywhere you want, even through private land, they can't stop you. And it's a it's a little bit different over there. Um, because of that, what they've gone and done is they've teamed up with the guy that did the jetpack. Uh, I think we did do a show on that with one of the shows we talked about that this mob that if you strap these jetpacks on and you can basically fly around they get they want to train their paramedics get them all jetpacks so they can basically fly to the top over all the ground straight to the top of the hill where or into a gully or a waterfall or wherever someone's that's fallen and hurt themselves and need emergency assistance and just get them super fast access so look this is amazing um i can imagine probably a lot of places like uh, say Alaska and all those mountainous ranges, the Himalayas, all these other places where you could have a first responder with a jetpack that could fly straight up, pinpoint drop right next to the person, take the gear off, get straight down and possibly save someone's lives, get get a warm blanket over them, all that sort of stuff, get them ready, save it until they're ready for a helicopter or someone can come and take them down and carry them down on a, on a uh, stretcher. So. Brilliant, brilliant idea. Uh, those jetpacks are pretty wild. It's obviously mega expensive. Peak uh, District is a fairly wealthy area, so I think they're probably a good idea, but uh, you imagine your life is on the line. Uh, cost not really something you think about, but if, if these guys have this access to these amazing tools, uh, well, I think it's definitely something that should happen. And it's pretty wild. Uh, I think it'd be cool. So. Uh, we'll uh, keep in touch on that. I think it's going to be a good way to get more of these jetpacks out there and running around. Imagine being a paramedic and then told you're going to learn how to fly a jetpack and it's gonna, you're going to get your own set. Uh, that would be pretty cool. It would be pretty funky. Uh, I don't know how I'd go with my fear of heights, but uh, I'd, yeah, I think it would be pretty cool anyway to try it out. So very, very cool. Right, yeah, we did get some stuff obviously on the way and then I get some stuff ordered. I... Unfortunately, I did get swindled. I'm gonna give you a hot tip. Um, where is it? Uh, I did have it here somewhere. Oh, it's over there. Uh, my drone. <laughs> You'll like this story. Uh, my little ordered, got it a Mavic Mini off a guy off, uh, from Melbourne, um, off eBay. Thank God I use PayPal. Um, all good, no worries. He wanted a hand, hadn't used it before. eBay had a all do all the stuff, helped him out, thought I was doing the right thing. Yeah, it's a nice thing. Obviously, Melbourne's struggling, so he's looking to sell his stuff to get some money. Well, what a piece of shit scumbag this guy was because it was a total scam and he sent a broken torch in the box. Yes. So there's a top tip for you. If you are buying online, please use PayPal, uh, something that 100% protects you. Uh, I've put in the claim, obviously, to eBay to get my refund back uh, with PayPal. I'm fully covered, so that's good. But uh, just painful because <laughs> in the post, my filters come from Freewell uh, for my Mavic Mini. So that's pretty funny. Now I've got my filters, I can't use them. Uh, so I've got a long exposure, so that's ND1000 and 2000. And then I got the Bright Day Pack, which is a four pack, uh, ND8, 16, 32, and 64. So that's pretty cool. And as well as that, for my little GoPro here, I've got a light pollution filter. So for night stuff, I'm uh, going to give that a crack as well. So, and my new unboxing knife, little Kershaw, only 20, 30 bucks. Pretty cool, very well made. So let's get these open. It's, uh, 
So yeah, I was pretty unhappy. I thought, oh, you know, got all my other stuff sorted. I'm just gonna sit down and uh, start charging the batteries on the drone and see, start planning when I'm gonna use it. I was gonna take it to work and on the next shoot and do some stuff. And well, it's, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, there are some rat bags on eBay. So yeah, if you are shopping online, uh, there's a few different ways you can do it. You can get uh, credit cards that are only certain amounts, um, or you can, uh, oh, nice. Very cool. Very nicely made. Freewell are getting better and better. They've upped the ante on their filters and that's no exception. So that should just clip on to my modified Lanzi case here. Beautiful, perfect fit. So now I should be able to get, that should assist me when I'm doing some night shoots so I can have that on and getting the stars just to get rid of that pollution out. So very, very cool. Nice fit, very, very nice. So that's one. And then I wanna check these out, quickly get through these. And then I've got one last thing to show you if I've got time. I'll go into the, uh, the other ones, I think, first. So Freewell do pretty much everything. Um, variable in fruit D filters. Now they do do, we did talk about the Peter McKinnon and the Freewells are, are pretty high quality as well. And they do do magnetic filters. So they just clip on, you don't have to screw them on at all. So that's a pretty good advantage of them. Very, very nice. They're definitely not falling apart these boxes. Ooh. Oh, look how tiny they are. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> How's that for a filter? Um, now, now these are aluminium and with these on, they still won't go over 250 grams. So you don't need a license for the drone. That's the beauty of the Mavic Mini. And that is a cute as a button. Very cool. What one's that? Uh, that's a 16. Very, very cool. <laughs> uh, nice little box. That's all good. So very, very cool. So we got them for when I'm um, now going to, in the process of having to get another drone. <laughs> and then last but not least, I went a little bit of shopping. I got a little bit of a bargain, I thought, um, and got a new lens. It was on Gray's Online. I thought I'd check it out. It only works in manual mode, but it was probably a third of the price. Now it's a Sigma 18 to 35 art series lens. Yes, uh, ridiculous. These are thousand twelve hundred dollar lenses. I think I got it for about 350 bucks uh, on auction. Um, it is only manual focus, but the I've had it on the camera and the pictures are crystal clear. So I'm going to be trying this out. I'm going to be doing a shoot tomorrow down at Fremantle. Um, I'm going to probably give this one, a, take this one as my photography and try and do as much as I can just manual focus wise with it and have a play with that one tomorrow. I've got the adapter already on there, my EF adapter. So very, very cool. Um, obviously you don't have the autofocus, which would be magic. I'm not sure if I can get it fixed. I'll have to look into that and see what I can do, but uh, how bad it is. It just, just comes up with an error. I've got to look into it a bit more E77 error, but uh, very, very cool, and yeah, as a manual lens, it's still a bargain because those optics are bloody insane. Rightio, well, that's me done and dusted on history. Um, I'll see you all again for the end of the week show Friday tomorrow. Okie doke, or whether you're coming this way, that way, I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace. Yeah.